if you're like me, you probably have a ton of spools of filament that barely have anything on them. And they've been sitting around forever, as well as some of these sample packs you get. And you're really not sure what to do with them. So here's a possible solution. The Sunlu FC01 that allows you to connect your filament together. <laughs> Maker build it and today we are checking out the Sunlu FC01 filament connector. This is not a sponsored video. I bought this with my own money. And the reason why I purchased this filament connector is I was curious if it worked. I've seen a ton of influencers do reviews on this, some good, some bad. I've read a lot of the reviews, same thing, some good, some bad. To my understanding, there is a learning curve, but once you get to figure out how to do it, it works well. So we're going to test it out and let you know if this is something you should add to your workshop. Now let's take a look at what comes inside the box. You have your instructions. You have the filament connector. And we got a charger cable. And we have PTFE connector tubes. So I read through the instructions. It actually seems pretty straightforward, even though I know a lot of people said it takes a little bit of practice. It is powered by a USB connector, which uh, goes into this connector end, which you think they would use like a USB-C or something like that, but you never know. So let's just plug this in and power it up. So it's on. It's set for PLA. Now we have the current temperature is the PV and the SV is the set temperature. So that's what it's set for. So as you can see, it's PLA and that's what we're gonna actually try to bond today. So we're just gonna take two of the PLAs. We're gonna take this silver overture and we're gonna take this green overture and we're gonna try to put them together. Well, it's really interesting because filament is on the spool. It's always going to be curved, right? So it's always going to want to go to its natural um, shape. So it's always going to want to curve in. So that's going to be probably the hard part of getting it to stay. Now, what the instructions are saying is to cut this at an angle. Same thing. I mean, I do this when I feed my filament. So we're going to cut it at an angle. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. Cut that a little sharper. And then we're basically going to put these two together at an angle so there's as much surface contact as possible. So we're going to insert one filament. And we're going to grab our other filament and line them up. There we go. Okay. We're going to open this up. We're going to pop that in there. We're going to, if you can see, there's like a metal piece. That's the heating element. We're going to want to make sure our filaments are touching over that. Then we're going to gently push them together. Okay, so we're gonna open this and turn the power off, it says. And we're just gonna let this cool for 15 seconds. Okay, now that's cool. We're gonna place it in this back part. Okay, supposedly that's gonna cut that off. I mean, it did join. Oh, there we go. There we go. Look at that. So it did join the two filaments. 
right there. That's pretty snug. Joined our two filaments. Uh, I mean, it took a couple of tries, but we got it, and it was really my own mistake for not reading the instructions. Probably good enough. Um, it worked. Actually, that's really... And it feels decently smooth. I mean, it's not perfect, but it should go through the PTFE tube pretty easily, I think. Um, okay, now I just need to wind one roll onto another, and then I'm going to add another um, roll of filament, and we'll try to print something with it. Pretty impressed so far with this little uh, Sunlu FC01, this filament cutter. You think I would have? You think I would have printed a filament? winder that attaches to my drill but i didn't so we're gonna do this by hand so it was pretty much rinse and repeat just weld all these different spools of filament together so we were able to take eight rolls of filament and combine them into one that equaled about 200 grams. Now I am curious how this is gonna print as we took different brands of PLA and actually merged them together. Now let's get something printed. Oh wait, I also forgot I had four sample spools I connected also. Now we used the general PLA setting in Bamboo Lab Studio and when we sliced it, it told us it was roughly a little over 200 grams of filament. I really have my doubts on whether my spool has 200 grams of filament or not. First layer is went down really smooth. So even though it looks like it is 200 grams of filament, my guess is it is less than that because the filament isn't as tightly wound as when you purchase a new roll of filament. Most of the time the print went pretty smooth. My fears were confirmed were only at 62% and we barely have any filament left on this spool. So we're going to have to add another spool of filament, which is not a big deal. But at the same time, you know, I thought about bonding more to the end of the spool, but I didn't want to mess up the print. So my model came out great and the filament worked really well, but not perfect. We wind up having 12 welds and four out of the 12 welds failed. And now when I look back at this, these were actually the first few wells I had done. And some of them were just a little too thin in certain parts. And the print head couldn't pull the filament in, in order to extrude it. So it had a success rate of about 66%, which I actually think is a decent success rate considering it was the first time I used it and I just used it back to back without testing even an initial weld. And like I said, the first few welds, the first few colors I uh, connected together were the ones that failed. So if you have a printer that has an AMS, you may be able to do something very similar where you can put your four spools and it swaps from one to the other when it runs out. I do have a video on that if you're interested in seeing how to set that up. But I would argue in many cases this is still better. One, if you have a printer that doesn't have an AMS, you could still connect your filament and make a new spool of filament. And two, even if you had an AMS, you wouldn't be able to use those small sample packets that come a lot of times with printers or even that you get from filament companies. So there were some other really cool things that came out of this. As you can see, my print of Gandalf came out really well. I actually love the way the butterfly came out. It sort of has like a little bit of a silence of the lambs feel, but it's still pretty cool. And I love the way Gandalf came out in multicolors. Honestly, I was going to paint this and just leave the sides, uh, the multicolors. But actually, after seeing this, I actually really like the way it came out. And I think I am going to leave it. Now, what was really cool about this is I was able to print in multicolors for the first time on my Bamboo Labs without it pooping. I think it pooped, uh, it pooped, I guess, four times. Every time it got clogged, it purged, right? So those were the only poops it actually created. And that was because we ran into an issue with the filament weld. So I would say the Sunlu filament connector was absolutely worth it, especially for the price point of around $50. I was easily able to bond eight rolls of filament and four more sample packs into one bigger spool in order to create a print that I would have necessarily not been able to use those filaments for. And I think once I have a little more experience, I will not have issues with the printer and my weld process. I need to spend a little more time inspecting my welds instead of being really excited that they actually held together. 
And if you're interested in this Sunlu filament connector, I dropped the link in the description below. For more on 3D printing, DIY, or maker projects, make sure you like and follow Maker Build It. And remember, keep on making. Thank you.